Well, I have the privilege of continuing our Christmas at Life Church series where we are focusing on the, on the idea that Jesus really does change everything. And there's one single word, very small word, that describes Christmas, I think, and what Christmas is all about, and is the word joy. In fact, our favorite carols around this time of the year, Christmas carols, say joy in it, like joy to the world, right? The Lord is coming. You don't want me to sing, do you? That's all right. <laughs> How about, oh, come all ye faithful. What's the next word? Joyful and triumphant. How about joyful all ye nations rise? We sing about joy because that small word encapsulates what Christmas is all about. So I want to ask a question. Does God want you happy? Well, he has something better for you than happiness. Maybe a better question is this. Is joy available? And I want to answer that question today through the scriptures with an emphatic all caps yes especially during Christmas. During Christmas season, is joy available? Absolutely, especially during Christmas season. We're gonna look at two passages of scripture out of Matthew chapter two and Luke chapter two. And if you're not familiar with the New Testament, there's, there's these four books at the beginning called Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they are the story of Jesus's life from birth until his death. And it is from four different perspectives. And so one writer might include something that another writer does not. And so Matthew writes about these four magi, or you might know them as four, or, or, or not four, There's, it's not mentioned about how many, the, uh, the, about the magi or the wise men. You might know of them as three. We don't really know how many. That's just from our plays at church that we say three. But they, Matthew, Matthew records these wise men, these magi that come following a star. And Luke is the only one who records for us the shepherds. And we included both in our play today so you could see Matthew and Luke's recordings about the birth of Jesus Christ in the announcement. So let's go ahead and stand up for the reading of God's word and let's see what Matthew and Luke have to tell us today about Jesus' arrival. Matthew chapter 2. When they heard the king, this is the, the magi, they had... They had uh, been before this narcissistic king. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Joy to the world. All right. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's see what Luke records for us in chapter two. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I, will, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. I want you to see that in both announcements of Jesus' birth, there was exceedingly great joy and there was an announcement of great joy to all people. So let's talk about this subject of what Jesus changes and it's joy to the world. Go ahead and high five somebody and you may be seated. <laughs> joy to the world. So let's start by defining what joy is. What is joy? We know that joy probably is not this. Joy is not... <laughs> Joy is not that. Joy's not even this. Joy's not SpongeBob SquarePants. Joy, joy is not happiness. What's the difference between happiness and joy? Happiness comes from the Latin word hap, which means chance. It's circumstantial based. So happiness, if you lived your life with the happiness being your goal, it would be like riding a roller coaster. It's up and down and it turns to the left and it turns to the right and you just hold on hoping for some chance or circumstance that will make you happy. Not that happiness is a bad thing. In fact, I watched this one video I wanna play for you in just a moment um, from an airline called WestJet that a few years back 
had their passengers be declaring on, to Santa Claus before they boarded the plane. He was just jolly and saying, what do you want for Christmas? And they were all saying, well, I want this and I want that. Well, lo and behold, when they boarded the plane, all of their requests were sent to people at, the, at their destination and they went shopping and, well, just watch this video. Check it out. Before Christmas and all across the land, the good folks of WestJet had a miracle plan. Is that Cohen? <laughs> Christmas this year, Cohen. A choo-choo train? Ho, ho, ho! A classic! You're looking fabulous! Oh, I need to. It's okay if you just want to stare at me as well. <laughs> what I need is uh, new socks and underwear. everything ready, we all had to wait for the moment of truth at Carousel 8. happy after that, right? Except the guy who asked for socks and underwear. That's, that's probably the only guy. So ha it's not that happiness is a bad thing, but joy and happiness are different because happiness comes from just a circumstance or how things are going in your life. And joy doesn't come from what's happening around you. Joy comes from the God that lives deep on the end side of you. And God, so God has something much more po potent for us this Christmas season, and really, honestly, all year long. He has something more potent for us than happiness. He has something that is really the full substance of heaven. In fact, the Bible uses this term one time, and it says this, joy unspeakable and full of glory. In other words, I'm not quite, quite sure that you can define what heaven's joy truly is. It is unspeakable and it's full of the essence of heaven. But I want to share a few thoughts about what Christmas joy is, joy to the world is this morning, and then how we can unwrap that gift this Christmas season. First thought is this, is that joy comes from God. Joy comes from God. It doesn't come from the things around us. Joy comes from God. Both announcements from Matthew chapter 2 and Luke chapter 2 came from heaven, and they were heaven's announcements that joy to the world, exceedingly great joy. And so that makes me think this question, then what is our picture of God? Does your picture of God include joy? Well, let's start here. Our picture of God is Jesus. Jesus is our picture of God. That's, he came and he is the representation of who God is. And the gospel writers paint the portrayal of Jesus using a kaleidoscope of brilliant emotional colors. We might think of God as just void of emotion like Spock from Star Trek, but I'm here to tell you that's not the God we serve. I just want to show you some of the emotions that the gospel writers depict of our God. Just look at this list. Jesus felt compassion. He was angry, indignant, consumed with zeal, troubled, greatly distressed, very sorrowful, depressed, deeply moved, grieved, sighed, wept, groaned, was in agony, surprised, and amazed. But he also had this, rejoiced very greatly, full of joy, and he loved. These are descriptions from the gospel writers and the scriptures of the emotions of our God. So in our quest 
to be like Jesus, I think often we just overlook his emotions and sometimes maybe we just forget about the joy of our God. Hebrews, the author of Hebrews did not forget about the joy of Jesus. Check this scripture out. Hebrews chapter one, you love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, speaking of Jesus, your God, speaking of the Father. So therefore, Jesus, your Father, has anointed you, pouring out the oil of, say the word, what is it? He poured out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. Think about that. Your Jesus has more joy poured out on him by the heavenly Father than on any one else. So does your picture of Jesus include pure joy? Let me ask this question. Does your God laugh? Yes, he, does. he does laugh. Your God laughs. He's joyful. He, think of the most joy-filled person you know, the most positive person you know. Your Jesus is, is more. Think of the person who whose their laugh is the loudest, their contentment is the greatest. Jesus' laugh is louder, his contentment is deeper, his smile is bigger. Is that the picture of the God that we serve? If it's not the picture of the God that we serve, then we need to go back and get a clearer view of him because it would be difficult for us to unwrap a gift from him that we don't think he possesses. You won't ever unwrap a gift from the God that you serve if you don't think he possesses that gift, if you don't think that that is something that is the essence of who he is, yet the gospel writers write that he was full of joy, he rejoiced greatly, and Hebrews author says that the the father poured out the oil of joy on him more than on anyone else. So I'm grateful that the God that we serve is a God that possesses joy, and not just that he possesses it for himself, but that joy is available for everyone. Now, the night before Jesus was betrayed, so just think about the timing of the scripture I'm about ready to show you. The night before Jesus was betrayed and handed over to the people who would crucify him, so he knows what's going to happen. He had been telling his disciples about it. the, the, The scriptures had declared it. Jesus knew the moment that was upon him. He said, I've I've longed for this day to be able to eat this last supper with you. And and I'll never do this again until, until, you know, the the heaven is, until until I've done all of the work that I need to do. So the night before, when he knows I'm about ready to go through the greatest suffering that he could go through, this is what Jesus says. John 15. These things I've spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. I'm like, this would not be the topic on my mind during that time. The night before the court appearing, the night before the divorce is final, the night before you have to go and see the principal again with your son or daughter. Right? It's the night before all of the things that, that, that circumstances are trying to steal God's joy from you. Jesus says this, and it's because Jesus knows that the circumstance that is upon me is also a circumstance that is upon you. And the devil is going to try to steal your joy from you because he he, all he has to give is circumstantial called happiness. But I want you to know that I've got something called joy that is not dependent upon what's going on or what's about to happen. And I want what's in me to be in you. So Jesus wants his joy to be in us. He's telling us he's got some. He's got joy. And if we, and he says, I have it and I want what I have to be in you so that your joy won't be half full, but that your joy will be absolutely full. He wants his joy to be in us, and he wants our joy to be full. But let's just be honest, it's not always full, right? I heard about a man walking his toddler uh, with a grocery cart through the grocery store, and he had put his, put his toddler in the, in the cart, you know, in those little seats up front, and, and, his, and his young boy just would not stop 
screaming. He would not stop yelling and he would not stop crying. And so he just was pushing his cart along and, and he just softly kept saying, Albert, don't cry. Albert, don't scream. Albert, we're, we're going to be home soon. Albert, please be patient. Albert, please be patient. Albert, it's going to be okay. And he just kept softly saying this over and over. And this lady was walking by and she saw how gently he was speaking to his young boy. And she just said to him, I'm just so, I just so commend you for talking so kindly to your little Albert. And he said, ma'am, he's not Albert. I'm Albert. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, isn't that how we feel, right? We're just like, oh, Albert, don't cry. We're going to be home soon. We're going to be home soon. You know, this, this, uh, this, just this past week, I was sitting in a small group, and we watched this video and had a discussion about, about being healthy spiritually and emotionally and physically and financially and relationally. And we were going through and, and rating ourselves in our small group about where we are and where we're the weakest, spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally, or financially. Where are we not healthy? And then where are we the most healthy? And went around the circle and sharing that. And, and then one of the questions and the comments from the video when it came to healthy emotionally and relationally was when's the last time that you sat around with some friends and you laughed so hard that you cried and you lost track of time and five hours went by before you even knew how long it had been. And I was like, ouch. Ouch, you know, when was the last time that we have laughed and where we lost track of time and we laughed so hard that we cried? And it was, it was a convicting moment, honestly, for me, thinking, when is the last time that I laughed so hard that I cried? And yet Jesus wants us to know that he does laugh. Our God laughs and he's full of joy and he wants to give that joy to us. And when he came as a child and he came as a baby, he made sure that the angels announced exceedingly great joy and that the shepherds were filled with joy. The wise men were filled with joy. He wanted to be sure that the angels announced from heaven good news, which is merry, glad, happy, Good news has come to the earth. And I think when I look at the two different groups that Matthew mentions the Magi and Luke mentions the shepherds, I, I think there's, these are two different groups of people. Magi, it says that they had come from far away. It says that the shepherds were near. And I, I think about us. I think, I think about humanity. There's some of us that feel as far away from God as we could ever be. And there's some of us that maybe grew up in church and we didn't necessarily feel that far away, but both of us had a distance to go to get near Jesus. And, I, and, and that joy, I just want to say this, that joy was available to the Magi, to those who were far away, and that joy was available to the shepherds who were near. That joy is available to you. Go ahead and just tell somebody near you, the joy is available for you. Go ahead and let them know that this morning. Joy is available for you. And I know you might be going through that night before that Jesus was in John 15. It's like, I don't have much to look forward to. Or I, I, Christmas is always a downtime for me. Or we've had loss or we're grieving this year. And we've got, we've got all these things going on. So did the Lord. And the Lord wants you to know he understands. He understands. And he said these words to his disciples knowing that they would be discouraged by what was about ready to transpire. And he knew that they were going to feel like their king had died. They were going to feel like all that they had done for the last three and a half years was pointless. He knew they were going to feel that. And he said, I spoke these words to you so that my joy would be in you and that it would remain and that your joy would be full. Yeah. I don't know about you, 
But that puts faith in my spirit to know that in the midst of trials, in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of when the roller coaster life is going down or feel like it's going to knock you out of the roller coaster, our God stands up in the middle of that and just lets us all know, I'm full of joy and I'm going to give what I have to you and it will sustain you through every trial and every temptation that you'll ever go through. So how do I unpack it then? How do I unpack this gift of joy? Let's do that. I just got two thoughts for us today. We could talk about a lot of things uh, from the scriptures about uh, unpacking the gift of joy. But I just want to look at two thoughts for us today that hopefully we can just assimilate into our life during this season and make it a part of our life for the rest of our life so that we can always walk in the joy that Jesus has for us. Back to Matthew chapter 2. Two, it says, when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. They fell down and worshiped him. This was the Magi, the wise men. And then the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen. So in the midst of, of this, this announcement and in the midst of seeing who Jesus was, these people who heard the announcement and saw the Lord experienced joy because they both did this. They both worshiped him. They both worshiped Jesus. Whether you are far from God or you feel near to God, we can all humble ourselves before a humble God and worship him. And when we do, joy begins to be unpacked as we humble ourselves before God and we worship his name. I think in the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season, it's easy for us to forget that this entire shindig isn't about us at all. This is all about him. And you know, Isaiah, he's this prophet we took a look at last week. And he is a great prophet of the Old Testament who declared the arrival of Jesus, declared that a son would be given to us and a child would be born. And he says some things about an exchange that this son would give to us. That when this savior would come, he will exchange some things with us in this life. And look at this out of Isaiah 60, 61. He will console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. So if you're mourning this season because of some loss over this last year. I need you to know that Jesus wants to give you an exchange. He wants to give you an oil of joy for mourning and a garment of what? Of praise. A garment of praise. There you go. So we can worship God anyway. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's the, the word ruach. If you're familiar with the Hebrew uh, word for spirit, the spirit of of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Well, joy is an anointing. There's an anointing that comes with joy because sometimes, so the oil represents anointing. There's an anointing that comes with joy, which is the empowerment of God. There's the anointing that comes with joy because sometimes we are affected by a spirit of heaviness. Sometimes we can be affected by a spirit other than God that is trying to keep you down. We've all done that. We wondered, man, what is it about today that I just feel down? Nothing's changed. Nothing's different. It's not like the news I heard was any different than the news I heard yesterday. But for some reason, I feel heavy. I feel burdened. I'm lacking passion. I'm not able to dream. I feel depressed. Sometimes we're dealing with with a spirit, and a spirit can't be counseled out. It can't be encouraged out. It can't be bought out. You can't buy enough Christmas gifts in order to get that spirit off of you. You gotta have the oil of joy. You have to have the anointing from Jesus that comes with joy to displace that which tries to keep you down. How do I get the anointing then? How do I get the anointing of Jesus? Worship him. Yeah. Worship him. Put on praise and worship in exchange for a lack of joy. Yeah. 
just go ahead and put it on. A garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. It's like, you know what? I don't want that spirit of heaviness. I don't want to live life down. I'm going to put on my other garment. I'm going to put on my garment of praise. I'm, going to, I'm not going to show up late to church every Sunday when it's the last song. I'm going to show up early, prepare my heart so that when I gather together with God's people, I will be one of the voices. Oh, hail King Jesus. Yeah, I can't get that high. There you go. We're going to join together. And then, of course, when it's not Sunday and I'm not gathering, I'm going to, I'm going to have some songs on my phone and songs on my Sonos and songs on, on your JBL or whatever you have in your car or at home. And you got some worship. And you put on praise. You put on worship in exchange for a spirit of heaviness. And you notice that that's what the Christmas story involved. There's all this announcement of great joy, an announcement of, of joy to the world, but coupled with, they bowed down and they humbled and they worshiped him. And then they went on their way praising and glorifying God. I'm so grateful that the God you worship isn't nearly as stressed out as we are. Right? Aren't you glad? I'm glad because I get, I, I get stressed out. I don't got this all figured out yet. I understand it scripturally, but I don't always understand it practically. But I got to be able to unpack my tool chest that says, Bob, you're not feeling right today. Put on the garment of praise. Put that right garment on. It's one of the ways that we unpack the gift of joy that Jesus offers us. And then I want to give you one that's right, it's really, it is the essence of all of the Christmas story. And sometimes we can just, just look right on by it. Jesus came to save us. That's it. He came and lived a life that made an eternal difference. That's what he did. And he was full of joy, living his life from birth to his resurrection. He lived on purpose. He lived to make a difference. Some of us have to figure out how I can begin to live a life that makes a difference. When I begin to live my life for the good news of Jesus. A joy will be unpacked in me that cannot be unpacked any other way. You see, that's what the joy is all about. It's sharing good news with someone else. Look at this again, out of Luke 2. When they had seen him, they made, look at this to the shepherds. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. The shepherds couldn't hold it in. They couldn't keep the good news to themselves. They shared widely what they had been told. And when they did, they danced their way back home. They danced their way back home, glorifying and praising God. What releases the greatest joy in heaven is what will release the greatest joy in you. And that is when you allow your life to be used, partnering with God to see someone else find that Jesus that these shepherds and magi found themselves. The Bible records for us that this is what makes heaven have the biggest party. Heaven's a big party, but especially when this takes place. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. When someone finds their way back home, 
joy in heaven goes ballistic. It's like, oh, someone found their way to the child. Someone found their way back home and joy is released. You see, church, if your life is only lived for you, you will always live your life based on happiness and not joy. You will live life up and down and circumstantially based. But if you let your life to be tied in to why Jesus came and you will redirect where you go based like the shepherds did and where the, like the magi did and you will go wherever he is and you will do whatever he is doing. If you will go wherever Jesus is and you will do whatever Jesus is doing, you will unpack joy. And here's what I found out. Joy is contagious. Come on, you all know it. Someone starts laughing. You can, we just throw a laughing video up on the screen and you just start laughing. Because joy is contagious. And I'm here to tell you, heaven will share its joy with you. When, when you allow your life to share the good news like the shepherds did and just make widely known. Say, well, Bob, I don't know that much about the Bible. <laughs> you, do, you think they knew, do you think the Magi knew much about the Bible? They were coming from a far long ways away. They were probably astrologers. Yeah, they knew some Old Testament history, but they, they probably didn't know a whole lot. I don't even think they were really the true God followers. And yet they made their way to Jesus. And the shepherds, they just made widely known what was told them. All you got to do is just tell others what God did in your life. Well, I can't answer all those questions about this or that and this. All I know is, is that I once was blind. I once was broken. I once had ruined my family. I once was addicted. I once was. But God, through Jesus, changed my life. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be, but I know this. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Do you know how many people just need to know they can be forgiven too? And when you just weren't, none of us are the Savior. There's only one of Him. You can't save your friends, but you can tell them who He is. You can't save your family, but you can tell Him. You can tell them who He is. And you can tell them what He's done in you. And you can just say, come with me. Just come and see. Just come and see. Invite people to church on Christmas Eve next Sunday morning. Say, yeah, we got a pretty bad Christmas Eve. Let me go back to what I said earlier. This whole shindig ain't about us. <laughs> this is all about him. And I just want you to know, your favorite church service you'll ever be in is when your friend, your son, your dad, who doesn't know Jesus yet, is sitting next to you hears the gospel presented like it's being presented today and says, I want that Jesus you're talking about. It'd be your favorite service. You know what would be released in you? Joy. Joy. Because you're living a life that makes a difference. So what do we do to unpack it? We worship Him. We humble ourselves before a humble God and we just worship Him. And then we just let our life be used everywhere we go to make widely known, like the shepherds did, what was told them. And if we'll do that, joy is yours. I just want you all to look at me just for another moment. You may be in church for the first time in a long time. Somebody else was that last week. But we all were that at some point. You might be online and you might relate to the Magi and go, well, they were a long ways off. 
and I, I, I'm far from God. I want you to get hope in the scriptures today to know that even though you might be a long ways off, you can find your way to him today. It's not a long journey. It's a journey of, God, I'm a sinner. And I repent of all that I've ever done. And I believe that Jesus, you are the Savior. And you came to the world to save people like me. And I ask that you would forgive me of every sin I've ever committed or I ever will. And I give you my life. If you will pray that prayer and you mean it, if you will mean that and say something like that to him, he will take you up on it. And he will change your life forever. I want to pray that right now. Let's bow our heads. And if you're in this place right now and you would say, Bob, that's me that you just talked about. I'm not going to call you forward, but I want to know who's in this room or who's online that would say, Bob, that's me. I want to get my life right with God today. I just want you to look up, catch eyes with me and wave. So I, if I don't see you, just, just wave at me so I can see you today. I see you. It's beautiful. Who else? I see you back here. Who else? I'm scanning. I don't want to miss you. I know this. I see you back here. It's beautiful. It's great. He loves you. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry because God's not in a hurry. Yeah, he sees you. Now I'm going to pray on your behalf. And just say yes to this as I pray. Jesus, thank you so very much for coming for me. Thank you that you chose a couple different people, some who were far and some who were near to announce your arrival. And I thank you that you've announced your arrival to me. And I admit to you today that I'm a sinner. I ask for you to forgive me of every sin that I've ever committed or I ever will. I want you in my life. I want you to be my Lord and I want you to be my Savior. I want to be what the Bible says is born again. So I give you my life today. Help me to live my life to make a difference the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted amen.